everybody. My name is Miro Griffiths. I'm 32 years old. I'm from the Wirral, so just across the water from Liverpool. And this video is going to, going to talk to you about uh, things to think about when perhaps applying to university and making sure you get the right level of support when you're doing that, but also some general tips about finances and managing finances as you go through your life and things change and you might have new priorities and your needs and support needs may change over time. A little bit of detail about me. So I am 32 years old at the time of recording and I've been connected to WizKids for many years. So around the age of 12, 14, I was involved in the kids board um, and I received my uh, a wheelchair off of WizKids at the age of 16, and I'm still using the same wheelchair, now at the age of 32, so that's a long time. In terms of my day-to-day uh, -day job, I'm a research fellow in disability studies in the School of Sociology and Social Policy at the University of Leeds. What disability studies means is the study of the social position of disabled people in society. So I'm really interested in other researchers in disability studies are really interested in how disabled people are marginalized in society, how they navigate the barriers in their daily life and think about how do we remove those barriers by focusing on changing things in the environment, changing people's attitudes or making sure that we have policies that support our participation and inclusion in society. So the first thing I want to talk about is about university. And I've been to university as a student, um, doing my undergrad and then my master's and my PhD. But I'm also now working in a university as well. And I think the first thing to think about is before you go to university or if your needs change while you're at university, make sure that you request support as soon as possible. So you can do that by visiting the uh, disabled student services or support services at the university and requesting to know what types of support are available at the university. But also, if you are eligible, request disabled students allowance. Now, that is a funding scheme where it will provide you with the necessary support so you can continue with your studies. And that may be accessing um, equipment such as uh, specialized software or, or specific software to assist you with, with completing your studies. It may be accessing um, support when you are attending different places at the university. So during your lectures or your seminars, or perhaps when you're using the library to go through materials and literature. It may also assist with travel expenses and the needs that you have as a disabled person and the additional costs that you may incur because you have to use certain types of transport to get to university. So there, are, there is funding schemes available. And of course, if you get disabled students allowance and you require an assistant whilst you're at university, then that will cover the cost of the assistant who will help you with your study and learning needs. So you wouldn't be accessing disabled student allowance to have support from an assistant who will help you with your healthcare needs or your social care needs, or personal needs as a broader term, the, the disabled student allowance will give you support for an assistant associated with your study needs and the learning needs that you have whilst going through your uh, studies. But of course, you will, may also have other needs as well, such as social care and healthcare needs. So ensuring that you have that in place when you go to university is really key. And make sure you build it around the way that you want it. Often we are told by professionals that we can only have support in a certain way and we're told to accept what we're given, but you have a right and you are entitled to request support that is sufficient, so it meets the needs that you have, but it's also designed around the things that you want to do with your life and the way that you want to spend your life. So when I receive support, I make sure that my support is organized around the things that are important to me. So when I was a student, that was making sure that I had support so I could go out in the evenings and spend time with friends on uh, on campus. It also made, made, meant that I had a support note taker in all my lectures so they could take notes for me. I, I'm unable to type, 
So I access support uh, through my disabled student allowance to give me voice recognition software so that when I was doing all my essays and assignments, I could speak into the computer and it would type everything for me instead of be, uh, having to type myself. So think about the support that you that you need or the needs that you have and the barriers that you're experiencing and then request the support and you may have to challenge because it can be quite a frustrating system to try and get support. It is quite long and sometimes you may get knocked back and you are expected to come back and appeal. But the key thing is that if you think that you're experiencing barriers in your everyday life, then you should be getting support to address those barriers. But also think about um, the relationship that you have with your lecturers and your, uh, you know, the other people who are teaching you throughout your studies and request adaptations and changes to the way that the content is delivered. So as a student, but you know, I had to spend a lot of time talking to lecturers about my access needs and saying, well, I, I prefer to have information given to me in a specific way. Um, and this is the best way for me to participate in classrooms and in lectures and so on. So being quite open and transparent about your access needs and highlighting the importance of addressing and taking account of your access needs will, make, will, make, will mean that you have an opportunity to participate in classes and in your studies at a level that is most comfortable to you. But also think about the additional aspects of your studies. So you may want to think about accessing accessible accommodation. So having conversations with the university and asking what are the accessible facilities on campus or in the local area if you want to stay closer to your university and then think about what needs to be put in place so that it is available to you by the time that you get there. And again, I can't stress that a lot of these requests and demands for support do take a long time to be developed and implemented. So doing it as early as possible is really key. But you also may want to contact local organizations in the area close to university to get some additional support or guidance or top tips. So you may want to contact local disabled people's organizations or DPOs for sure. And DPOs are organizations that are run by and for disabled people. So they are disabled people who are involved in these organizations, who may have direct experience of the issues that you are wanting to explore, and they'll be able to give you resources and peer support because they may have gone through the process or they may be going through it at the same time as you. And then you can, you can share and develop strategies for addressing the barriers that you experience. But you also may want to ask the university, is there a disabled student's union? So is there a union of students dedicated to focusing on disability and trying to create an inclusive and accessible experience at university? You may want to join the union to, in order to have opportunities to improve facilities for yourself, but also for subsequent students who may come after you. And you may also want to think about asking if there are networks of disabled students who can then inform and influence the university departments and the university broader policies. Because if you see things that are not working, the best thing to do is find out if there are other people as well who have similar ideas to you, and then you can pressure and campaign for changes, not just within one university, but maybe across the entirety of higher education. So campaigning and creating a voice of people with direct experience of barriers is really key to this. So if we think a little bit beyond university and think about your everyday life now and also in the future, there are some things that you may want to think about. So you, you will incur a higher level of costs because you are a disabled person. So as disabled people, we have to spend a lot more money on trying to access different environments. Now, often that should be funded by the government or it should be funded by local, uh, you know, local councils and so on. But you may not be eligible for certain levels of, of need. So you may want to think about ensuring that you have money set aside, particularly if you have disposable income, to fund some of those aspects of your access costs. So, for example, I'm, I'm uh, unable to access um, funding for adaptations to my house because I earn a certain amount which is above 
the uh, what's called a threshold. So that means that I'm unable to access sufficient amount of funding and I may have to pay for that myself because of my disposable income. So I need to think every month about just setting aside some money to cover the costs associated with adaptations to my house or maybe modifications to my wheelchair because I have a private chair and therefore I have responsibility to look after it myself. But the key thing is, if you think that the cost is associated with a specific need that you have, a social care need or a health need, then it's always a good principle to go and speak to social workers or health professionals or local DPOs and ask, is there available funding to meet these access costs? Because in the first instance, you want to find if there is other available funding to address the, the, the barriers that you're experiencing. And then if it's not possible to access funding, it's then thinking about well, what's the best way to try to move past that. And again, if we think about wheelchairs, it's always important to be linked into your local wheelchair service. And again, stress the importance of making sure that the support is designed around what you want and of making sure that the wheelchair that you're receiving and the costs for maintaining your wheelchair do not automatically fall on you, but that there is a conversation to ensure that you are not uh, taking a, taking account of all the costs when perhaps there are other support schemes available to fund some of those issues. And it's also thinking about assistive technology. Now, you may want to speak to your local DPO or perhaps your local health authority and ask, is there a local assistive technology service where they can come and assess your home and think about the implementation of different controls and configurations so that your house can be a lot more accessible and that you have a lot more choice and control over uh, accessing and engaging with your home. So, for example, I have assistive technology in my house. I have automatic doors so they can open and close when I want to leave my home. I have automatic uh, systems like uh, curtains, so my curtains can open and close as well. I have controllers that can control numerous amounts of light switches, as well as televisions and, and the, the landline phones. So having all of this is quite expensive, but because I'm linked into my local assistive technology scheme, it means that a lot of this is funded by the local health service so that I can have it in, 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 embedded in the first place, but also then maintained and reviewed at a regular basis. So just making sure that you're linked into all these services is really important. And it can feel quite overwhelming when you know, you've got to make sure that you're linked into your health service, occupational therapy, uh, assistive technology, maybe disabled student support, and so on. It can feel quite overwhelming. But my advice is try to build a manageable schedule where you are regularly talking to these individuals and making sure that your needs are being met. But again, I must stress, it is very frustrating and difficult to have your needs met. And you will encounter situations when you're told that there is no support available or they don't think it's a justified need. And my suggestion to you is always fight, always argue that you have a right to access these schemes. You have a right to access support. So that hopefully gives you a little bit of guidance around the things that uh, you may occur as you go throughout your life. So whether it's about uh, cars, such as motability, whether it's about occupational therapy and, and schemes to access education, or it's about assistive technology, there is support available to you. And if you don't know, the best thing to do is ask people who may have resources and guidance or who may have been through the system themselves and can they advise and give you some great ideas. So thanks for listening. And I really hope it was useful for you.